Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to do Soul Calibur 6 online gameplay with Madra Uchiha, one of my favorite bad guys of anime of all time. Uh, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel, hit the like button down below, and remember any donations, big or small, will help the channel grow. Thank you, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Alright guys, let's see who our opponent's going to be. So, let's get into uh, Madra Uchiha's story. To those who never watched the Naruto series or Naruto Shampooing, and even Boruto. Well, I don't know. I'm I'm really disappointed with what they did with Boruto. I mean, it did get good towards the end, but still, like, ugh, such a letdown. But I'm not here to bash one of my favorite animes of all time. If you haven't seen Naruto or Shippuden or even Boruto, you're missing out. It's a good anime. Go watch it. Um, hold on. Looks like my opponent is a female version of Goku. So I guess I'm fighting a female Saiyan here. Okay, this should be a good fight. So let's get back to the story, right? So Madra, right? He was born during the Warring State period, and he was the eldest of the Tajima Uchiha's five children. Madra and his siblings grew up on the battlefield, waging constant war with the Uchiha rivals, the Senju. Right? Three of his siblings died young, leaving Madra with his only younger brother, Izuna. Madra and Izuna became very close to their shared losses and constantly competing with each other to get stronger. This combined with his naturally strong chakra enabled the young Madra to defeat an adult Senju in battle, developing a reputation as a genius. Now, when he defeated an adult Senju, doesn't mean like, you know, Senju Hashirama. Now, he's talking about other Senju adult members, all right? Like, he was beating, he was killing grown ups. Like, that's how strong he was, all right? Now, let me see what else it says here. Damn, this is really whipping my ass, bro. Like, hold up. Right, let's get back to the story. It says here, so his reputation is the genius, right? During his infrequent um, downtime, right, Madra met a boy his own age named Hashirama. The two um, quickly developed a friendly rivalry um, by skipping stones and urinating in rivers. Like Madra and Hashirama was able, was also a shinobi who had lost his brother on the battlefield. Together, they imagined a world where children like themselves would need to fight. As the reputation of Madra and Hashirama did not. Uh, divulge their family names but nevertheless discover each other's identity. Madra was an Uchiha. Hashirama was a Senju. It was the duty it was their duty to kill each other, even if they were friends. Needing to choose between his family and his dreams of peace, Madra chose to end his friendship with Hashirama. So he would have no reservations over killing him in the future. And the resolve was strong enough to awaken his Sharingan. Now it says here, um, Madra and Hashirama clash on the battlefield over the following years. Madra and Hashirama continued to meet in combat. Madra could never defeat Hashirama even after acquiring the Magekyo Sharingan. Nice, that's level 2. It says here, and Hashirama could never bring himself to kill someone he still considers a friend, resulting in constant stalemate between the two that lasted decades in time. Both Madra and Hashirama became the leaders of their respective clan, uh, a position that Hashirama uh, tried to use to broker a peace between them. Although some of the Uchiha found the offer increasingly tempting, Madra refused due to Izuna's death at the hands of Hashirama's own brother, Torirama. Wait, Torirama, Senju. Despite this, uh, some of the Uchiha um, defected over the Senju clan. And out of self um, preservation, right, Madra then used Izuna's eye in order to gain the eternal Magekyo um, Sharingan and restore his let me see, deteriorating vision. So that's level 3. Uh, with his new power, he waged one final assault against the Senju and was um, summarily defeated. Rather than to kill Madra to bring the era of war to an end. Okay, so it says here, Hashirama offered to kill himself if it would stop the fighting. Madra was moved by Hashirama's gesture and finally ascended to peace. Now, real quick, let's get back to this battle. Like, yo, 
Um, it's the final round. Like, yeah, she got me on the ropes, bro. Like, she was really a good competitor, but it ain't over yet. Let's go. Hold up, gotta finish this first. Mm. And it's over. Special. I mean, she put up a hell of a fight. This was a very, very tough fight, man. But look at that. Won three straight in a row. Made the ultimate comeback and finished it with a special. Good game, good game. Alright, let's see who our next opponent is and let's continue um, reading the story. Alright, here we go. So it says here, the Senju and the Uchiha and all their affiliated clans came together to found the village of peace. Where the children will never have to die in battle, right? Okay, my opponent's name is Valeria. Alright, this should be a good fight. Alright, so it says here where, uh, okay, Madra and Hashirama rekindle their childhood friendship, seeing it through the leaves. But Madra's idea of peace is different for Hashirama's, where Hashirama's envision a cooperation with other newly formed village. Madra desire control, as so peace could never be lost, and evidence in attacking other villages so they would submit to Kanaha's authority. When Harashirama uh, was elected as Hokage's Kanaha's leader, Madra also became concerned for the Uchiha's future, um, believing this is the f but the first step in the Senju dominance. Alright. Damn, okay, let's go. Let's make quick work of this. Let's see if we could get the broom on this guy. Alright, so it says here, the stone tablet, the Zetsu altar, had been in the Uchiha's possession for generations and it was brought with them when they settled into Panaha. All right, through careful study, Madra was able to decipher enough to learn from the history of the Shinobi and of the endless cycle of failed peace and destiny of battle between the Uchiha and the Senju. But it also meant of unity for the world. With this knowledge, Madra decided that Konoha was a failed experiment. Ooh, don't get too close to the edge, my dude. Ooh, I told you. I mean, I didn't want to do a ring up, but shit happens. I mean, I mean, it was a really good fight. I mean, I'll give you the rematch if you choose to accept it, but I'm gonna go ahead and continue on reading that. So it says here, he tried to convince his own clan and even ha um, Hashirama of the same conclusion, but none, of, no one would hear him out. Madra chose to abandon the village, attacking Konoha on multiple occasions later returning with the nine-tailed demon fox under his control to challenge um, Hashirama. Believe in your power and and your for here. victory. I can see the fear in your okay, eyes. they fought to an exhaustion, and from the carnage of their battle, the Valley of the End was formed. In the end, Madra was killed by Hashirama. News of, her, of Madra's death spread fast, and his corpse was secretly hidden to keep anyone from finding it and profiting from it. But Madra had planned ahead, you see. He had scheduled the Izanagi to activate sometime after his death, changing reality to bring him back to life in exchange for his wide eyes vision. Having expected this, Black Setsu located Madra's corpse and hid himself inside of it. Madra's body, allowing, um, allowing it to later deceive Madra into thinking he created it. Okay, after being revived, he left the copy in place of his real body and went into hiding. With a special trophy from his fight with Hashirama, a mouthful of Hashirama's flesh. Now what they talking about here is that during that fight, he was close enough to Hashirama to bit off a flesh of his body. That's what they're talking about. Hold on, let's finish this fight real quick. Uh, here we go, here we go. See, I'm trying to see if I can get him with the special. And get closer. Ugh. Hold on, I'm about to get him. I want to finish it with the special real quick. Ooh, he blocked it. Now I can't use it. Damn, what a waste. Alright, it was a good fight. I gave you a rematch, but now it's time to move on and fight somebody else. Good game, though. Alright, here we go. Let's see who our next opponent is going to be real quick. Alright, so I'm going to read that last sentence again. So, a mouth of Harashirama's flesh 
that he had transplanted into his wounds. It was not until decades later, towards the end of Madro's natural life, that the cell had any effect, awakening the Renegon, in the process restoring his right eye. With the Renegon, he was able to summon the demonic statue of the Outer Path, which he used to cultivate mindless living clones of Hashirama from where he believed he had produced a white Setsu army. So this is Madra working behind the scenes while everyone is living their normal life, they thinking that he's dead. This is him in the background, like behind the scenes working on, you know. So hold on, let me look at my opponent. Alright, this should be a okay fight, I guess. Good fight. It says here now. Over the years, Madra had perfected his plan for peace in what he called the Eye of the Moon plan. But his but as the years passed by, right, Madra knew he couldn't complete his plans in the time he had left. So he transplanted his Renegon into a young Nagato without the boy knowing, intending for Nagato to someday use his eyes to restore Madra back to life. If Nagato was to do this, however, Madra would need an agent to act on his behalf to guide Nagato toward his ultimate goal. I don't know, but my opponent, I like his outfit. He looks like one of the Assassin Creed characters, so whoever you are, my dude, uh, your, your creative character looks pretty good. I like it. Alright, let's see what it says here, right? So, Madra waited, right? He connected himself to the demonic statue to keep him alive until someone could be found. So, basically, you know, if it wasn't that he was connected to the ghetto statue, he would have died already, right? That's the only thing keeping him alive. And it, and basically, it's like exactly as they say, he's waiting to find somebody that he could manipulate and control, right? So let me say this here. As Madra waited, he connected himself to the demonic statue to keep him alive until someone could be found. Madra spent his time keeping a close eye to Konoha to find a suitable pawn to take his place. Alright, it says here, during the Third Shinobi World War, Madra found a badly injured Obito. Madra used the Hashirama cells to replace Obito's damaged um, extremities and placed a forbidden individual curse tag in Obito's heart as he failed state in case Obito would ever turn against him. Nice, I, I, I didn't know that. Alright, let me see what it says here. Uh, it says here, until the end, right? Until then, Madra began working towards corrupting Obito, right? He had the Kigokori um, kidnap the girl Obito loved. Wait, kidnap the girl that Obito loved, Green Nohara. And the seal of, okay. So you have to understand that if you watch the, um, that, that part of the episode, right? Rin was kidnapped from the Hidden Leaf Village and they transplanted the third, the three-tailed beast inside of her in order for her to go back to the village and have the tailed beast go on a rampage. But this was all Madra's doing. See, there was there was no um, Hirigaku um, clan or whatever. I mean, there were, but these were all white Zezu in disguise, like the, trans the transformation jutsu, right? So, obviously, Obito didn't know this. Alright, so it says here, he kidnapped the girl that Obito loved, Rin Nahara, and he sealed the uh, three-tailed beast into her. He manipulated the event so that Rin would die at the hands of Obito's. Oh, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Alright, he would manipulate the event so that Rin would die at the hands of Obito's friends, Kakashi Hakate, while Obito watched. Driven to despair, Obito offered his service to Madra. Madra divulging to Obito that, hold on, let me see here, that the history of the Sage of the Sixth Path and the Ten Tailed Beast, that the details of his Eye of the Moon Plan and various techniques that Obito would need moving forward as the final act left behind Black Sesu. Now, you have to understand, so. Right, in the events, Kakashi did kill Rin, but he wasn't aiming at her. He was aiming at somebody else, and she got in front of them. So he would kill her because she knew that if she went back to the village, 
the, the three tail beasts will go out of control. So that episode was badass. But then Obito goes on a freaking rampage, bro. He starts killing everybody. And he awakens his Sharingan Gun and my Genkyo. Well, no, he had his Sharingan Gun already. He awakens his my Genkyo Sharingan Gun, which also um, helped Kakashi because he had his other eye. Again, you gotta watch this series. It's really, really, really good. All right, um, let's keep going, guys. Let me see here. Uh, okay, history of the ten toys, blah blah blah. Back to two. Okay, let me see what it says here. Well, uh, what he believed to be the manifestation of his will. Now, that's what they're talking about, Black Tetsu. Again, Black Tetsu is his, is not, it's like, he, he is his own person. But he tricked Madra from the very beginning, thinking that he was his, um, his will, his bad intention, but he's not. Madra is being played, which we don't find out until later on. So, spoilers. Um, to provide additional guidance to Obito in the pursuit of his goal with that Madra disconnected from the demonic statue and with his dying breath entrusted Obito with his name Madra Uchiha so by the time we get to Naruto and Naruto Shampoodin Obito is pretending to be Madra Uchiha okay since that's a very powerful name and everybody knows who he was like it brought fears into people's heart, right? So this is Obito pretending to be him, getting Nagato ready, getting, you know, doing all the work behind the scenes to bring back the actual Madra. Oh my God, the Shippuden um, war arc is one of the best I've ever seen, like, in all the anime. I mean, yes, it has its fillers, but man, what storytelling, man. This guy was a genius. Ooh. And I guess this is the end of this guy. Got him with the special. Alright, let's see how our next opponent does. Alright, let's see who our next opponent is. Okay, let's see here. Your name is Nova. Very interesting name. Pretty good. I mean, there is nothing else to say about Madra. You just got to watch the anime. Wow, her appearance is pretty cool. This should be a good fight. I mean, again, you're going to love that anime. If you haven't seen Naruto or Naruto Shippuden, do yourself a favor. Go watch it. Yes, minus the fillers, but it's still such a great storytelling. And to me, this is one of the best show of all times of anime. Definitely top three. Well, to me, it's number one. But... Do yourself the favor and go watch it. So I got some quotes here from Madra, right? So at one point in time, he talked to Onoki and Mu, and this is what he told them. There is no alliance. From here on on, you will obey Konoha and never say that Shinobi's name around me. Now, when he told them that the Shinobi that he was referring to was Hashirama, I guess one of them brought him up, and that shit just pissed him off, bro. <laughs> oh, my God. Um... Another one, um, let's see here, at one point in time he was talking to Hashirama himself and he was like, yo, while I walk towards my real dream, I will enjoy fighting you. So that's pretty cool. All right, to Obito, right? He said, in this world, right? No, hold on, let me start over. To Obito, this world is full of things that don't go as you wish. The longer you live, the more you realize reality is just made of pain and suffering and emptiness. Listen, in this world, whenever there is light, there are also shadows. As long as the concept of winners exists, there must also be losers. The selfish desire, the wanting to maintain peace causes war, and hatred is born to protect love. And it says here, the second time <laughs> that Madra is dying, he tells Obito, Go until the time I revive, you are Madra Uchiha. That's bad as well. Uh, it says here to Naruto, right? He told him, um, I just stopped the fate of this world. I free people from pain and suffering and emptiness. Naruto, you're getting in the way of everyone's happiness. Our game, our game ends here. I turn hell into heaven. You should understand. It's already over. So that was pretty bad. Let's see, do I have any more quotes? No, that was it. Alright, it's over. 
Let's see if I can finish this fight. Oh, damn, she got me with her special. Nope, oh, she got that round. Damn, I was trying to get the boom on you, girl. But yeah, guys, Madra Chiha Man is one of my favorite, favorite characters. Like, one of my favorite bad guys. Like, you just gotta do yourself a favor and go watch the anime. It's really, really good. All right, let me see if I could put an end to this fight real quick. There we go. Oh, that's nice side step. I give her that. She's definitely a lot faster than I am. Most likely characters there, you know, are slower because they hit more for more damage. But when they fast like her, like, it takes time. I'm trying to see if I can get to with the special, dude. Like, hold up. Back up. I'm trying to end it with a nice special, like. Gotti. <laughs> I know you, man. <laughs> Alright guys, well this was the last video of the night. I hope you enjoyed today's video. I'll see you guys next time. Blessings for those who have repeatedly escaped the clutches of death.